Hello everyone. In the prior session, we explained the concept of accounting depreciation. And we assumed without even explicitly sta stating so that we purchased our asset at the beginning of the year, assuming a calendar year, January 1st. Well, that's not really true in the real world. That's not what typically happens. Usually January 1st, people are off. Assets are bought and sold for that matter at various times throughout the year. Which brings us to the first topic for today, which is partial year depreciation. So you already know how to compute depreciation. Now we are going to compute partial year. Partial year means we need to prorate the depreciation expense based on how long we have actually owned the asset during the year. Why? Because you can only take the depreciation expense for that specific period for that particular year. And usually this happens in the first year of the life of the asset and in the last year, because during the last year, you might sell it throughout the year. The second topic we will cover today is changes in estimates. When we learn how to compute depreciation, we made certain estimates. What are they? The salvage value of the asset, the asset use for life. But can we change these estimates as time progresses? And the answer is yes. And this is what we would learn and we will discuss in this session. Under what circumstances you can change the estimates and how to compute, how to handle these changes and what adjustments need to be made for these revised estimates. At the end of the session, we will work as usual, a multiple choice question. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's dive immediately into a partial year depreciation example to illustrate the concept. Let's assume a company purchases a delivery truck on April 1st for $50,000. The useful life of this truck is five years. The salvage value is $5,000. The company uses the straight line method for depreciation. Now, whether it's the straight line method, the double declining balance method, it does not make a difference. The way we are going to compute partial depreciation, it applies to all method. So first, you compute the annual depreciation as if you purchased the asset at the beginning of the year. So the cost is 50, salvage value is 5. We take the formula and apply what we learned in the prior session, cost minus salvage value divided by the useful life will give us an annual depreciation amount of $9,000. This is for a full year, 100% correct. Now, did we purchase this asset on January 1st? Not at all. On January 1st, we were resting. It's the beginning of the year. The night before we were partying, right? <laughs> so it's not a full year asset. So what we need to do, since we need to prorate it, we need to figure out for how long we had this truck. Well, and how long did we use it? We're going to assume we used it as of April. When we put it, when we bought it, we immediately started to use it. We used it nine out of the 12 months, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Therefore, we're going to take the annual depreciation, which happens to be 9,000, and we're going to multiply it by the prorated amount, which is 9 divided by 12, 9, 12 of a year, which will give us an annual depreciation of how much? 6,750. Now, the journal entry is the same as we learned in the prior session, which is debit depreciation expense 6750 credit accumulated depreciation 6750 for this partial year now let's talk about changes in depreciation estimate as we mentioned we could have 
new information and based on this new information we have to change our estimate whether it's the life of the asset or its salvage value depreciation computation are based on estimate and estimates could change when we determine the useful life it was an estimate when we determine the salvage value it's an estimate over time we have new information and once we have this new information we have to make adjust we have to adjust our estimates in good faith and i emphasize the word in good faith it means you cannot keep monkeying with these salvage values and useful life especially in bad faith so in good faith as long as you have valid reasons you can show it in case you were asked that's fine so when this happens company apply these changes and estimates prospectively you need to know what prospectively means it means they adjust they adjust the depreciation computation going forward without changing any prior financial statements let me explain one more time what does that mean let's assume you made a change in year three if you made a change in year three you're gonna take it in year three and move forward you don't go back to year two year one and make any changes it's prospectively we have prospectively prospectively means the current and going forward we don't go back if we go back the term is called retrospectively retrospectively is when we go back and make changes changes in depreciation estimate is a normal changes in estimate even if you change depreciation methods if you go from the straight line to the double declining or from the double declining to the straight line we use it prospectively not retrospectively the best way to illustrate this is to work an example and we're going to continue with the examples that we started in the on this in this session so continuing with the example above initially the useful life was five years but due to unexpected wear and tear the company now estimate that the truck would only last for another two years so basically we shaved one year also Remember, we, we, we thought we we're going to get 5,000 as a salvage value. We're going to reduce it to 3,000 based on the new information, based on the market value for this truck. So what do we do when we have a changes in depreciation estimate? The first thing we do is we determine the book value at the time of the change. Now, we learn about the book value. Let me give you the formula. The book value is the cost minus any accumulated depreciation up to that accumulated depreciation for two years total 15,750 for year one we computed it above 6750 and the full year two is 9,000 total of 15,750 the book value is cost minus accumulated depreciation 50,000 minus 15,750 is 34,250 now we recompute the depreciation based on this new estimate simply put this is the new cost I'm gonna put the new cost in quote basically think of it as the new cost now for the remaining two years we have a book a cost of 34 to 50 a two-year asset and a salvage value of 3,000 well we compute the formula the book the new book value minus the salvage value divided by the two remaining years will give us a depreciation amount of 15,625 therefore for the next two years we're going to have a depreciation expense of 15,625 do we have to go back and change the prior years and the answer is no year three year four will be this much we don't go back and change year one and year two it's handled how prospectively changes in depreciation estimate is handled prospect let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhatlectures.com which of the following statements best describe the revision of an accounting estimate it's reflected in the current and future years not in prior statement is that correct and the answer is yes when you have a change in estimate change in estimate are normal estimates are judgment we estimate bad debt expense we estimate depreciation we estimate warranties we estimate many things in accounting when we estimate when we have a change in estimate we look at the current period we change the current period based on the new estimate and future periods we don't go back 
not prior statements. It's not allowed under current accounting rules. It is allowed as long as you have a justification. It's reflected in the past financial statements. That's incorrect. It changes in accounting estimates. Now, I keep emphasizing the word estimate because eventually we're going to have changes in accounting principles. That's different than estimate. And you will see that down the road in your advanced accounting courses. It's reflected in future financial statements and also require modification of past. No, it does not. So the answer is A, it's reflected in the current and future periods. It's handled prospectively. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice, exercises, lectures, that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student, a CPA, CMA candidate, or taking this for professional advancement. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course,